Hi everyone, I'm Callie Cowart. And I'm Kayla Goodman. Today we're talking about the IDEA category of other health impairments and how music therapy can be beneficial for these students. This category is possibly the broadest of all the IDEA categories in terms of diagnoses due to the education system wanting to help all possible students whose diagnoses interfere with the learning process. To accommodate for the broad diagnoses, we will break it down into two main groups. The first being Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, and the second being Physical Disabilities. First, let's take a look at ADHD. ADHD is defined by the American Psychiatric Association as a persistent pattern of inattention or hyperactivity impulsivity that interferes with functioning or development. According to the Centers for Disease Control, each classroom typically has one to two students diagnosed with ADHD or presenting problems relating to ADHD, making it one of the most common barriers to learning. ADHD typically shows a correlation with genetic disorders as well as congenital disorders, but causes are still not completely understood. So where does music come in? A meta-analysis by Molloy and Peterson gathered information from previous studies about the effectiveness of music interventions for this population. The results suggest that music interventions can be effective strategies to address and improve academic difficulties with these students. In fact, music listening during academic tasks may boost productivity, increase accuracy of results, and lessen the amount of attempts made for students with ADHD. But why? The authors suggest that this is, to some extent, due to the optimal stimulation theory. Zintal used this theory with children with ADHD and found that the lower the arousal or stimulation, the higher the levels of activity were presented in the children. This theory supports the idea that if you feed the external stimulus with music, the performance level should increase rather than decrease. Each study in this meta-analysis tested this theory and found it to be true, with the children's overall academic performance being improved by music listening. Due to the fact that the measurement of improvement and adaptation is solely dependent on behaviors, the best possible approach for this population is a behavioral approach. To optimize success with students diagnosed with ADHD, it may be helpful to allow extra time for completion of tasks, Use interests to help keep the student engaged, such as a transition song. Break down more complex tasks step by step to create a sense of simplicity. Make the sessions highly structured so there is less opportunity for distraction. And when activity seems high, use the optimal stimulation theory and fill the external stimulus with music. Our next topic will be focused on physical disabilities. A physical disability, as defined by IDEA, is a severe orthopedic impairment that adversely affects a person's performance. This can be in either skills of daily living or in an educational setting. Physical disabilities can either be congenital or acquired throughout life. We will be looking at three articles today, all covering different aspects of physical disabilities. The first is a control study showing how music therapy, in addition to pulmonary rehabilitation, can help improve respiration function and lessen the effects of dyspnea in people with moderate to mild asthma. Our next article is a retrospective examination to look in depth at ways music therapy can be beneficial in adults diagnosed with leukemia, lymphoma, or multiple myeloma. The outcome showed that needs that were beneficially met through music therapy included sociocultural goals, sensory deprivation, emotional pain management, and then physical pain management. The last article is about how rhythmic entrainment through neurologic music therapy can really target motor areas, which is a beneficial goal for people with physical disabilities. Through these articles, especially the last one, we have found that neurologic music therapy has been shown to be the most beneficial for this population. Things that you can expect from students or clients with physical disabilities are frequent absences due to various doctor's appointments, potential interdisciplinary work to create proper goals in the least restrictive environment for your students or clients, and mobility restrictions. Here are some strategies you can use to make your environment less restrictive for your client. You can use receptive listening, especially with clients with asthma, to help with their respiration. You can use adaptable equipment, such as mallets and pencils that can require them to use more or less force to use, and room arrangement. For more information on other health impairments, visit www.betterhealth.vic.gov.au or try out ADHD Experts podcast, the Accessible Stall podcast, or the Buster Baxter Lung Defender app.
We hope you learned more about other health impairments and ways that music therapy can be beneficial for this population. This is Callie and Kayla signing out. Thanks for watching.